Welcome. I have been asked to make some videos of the process of teaching Buster here to pull a pony cart. So this, this ought to be fun. Um, Buster is a four-year-old Shetland gelding. I've had him about a year and a half. And other than just being cute, his primary job is giving rides to very small children. And he's pretty good at that job. He's never pulled a cart. And amazingly, I'm been training horses for 50 years and I've never trained a horse to pull a cart. I don't think I've ever even actually driven a cart or a wagon. To my memory, I've ridden in them, but I'm pretty sure I have enough of the concept that we can get this done. So there, the things that Buster needs to know in order to pull a cart. The first one is he needs to understand his cues to go forward, left, right, and stop. Now, I have done this kind of ground driving that you see here quite a bit with him, although I haven't done it lately. It's probably been five or six months since I've done this, just because I've been busy training other horses. <laughs> All right. So he understands he's being a little bit not very compliant, but he does understand left and right. So let me turn him right. So he, st he understands that. He's going to need a little more practice with this, but... I think he has the basic concept down. Let's see how he does with stop. And I would prefer that he stop from my voice. That would be my preference, that he stop from my voice rather than me having to pull on both reins. But I will if I need to. Ooh, that was really nice. And I have taught him that before. It's been a while, but he remembers it. Now I'm going to add a cue that I haven't used before. Okay. Walk. Okay. So I want to teach him that cue when I say that word that he starts moving without me having to cluck to him. The reason I want to do that is because the cluck means trot. Um, he already knows that cue, so I don't really feel like I need to add another cue. I think I'm happy with that. So if I click to him here, he didn't. I had to get after him a little. He should move into a trot. There he did. Okay. So let's try it again. Woo. Really nice. Really nice. Okay, so I'm going to stop a second and pet on him. Let him know that I really like that. There we go. There we go. Good boy. All right. So we'll try this one or two more times. Walk. Good. Now, I don't know if he really understands the cue or if he just felt my energy telling him to move. But that's a pretty good start. So turning left pretty nicely. Let me see if he'll trot off. Better. Better. Like I say, it's been several months since I've done this, so not surprised he's a little rusty. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> He's coming over here for some loving. <laughs> okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, that's a pretty good start. I'll work on that four or five more times at least before I actually put him in the cart and ready and ready to, to pull it. The next thing that we need to do, and I do have a harness, by the way, for this cart. And I have, I have fit the harness to him, but I, don't, I didn't really want to use it today. I wanted to use... Uh, what the, the, the equipment that he's already familiar with. And uh, I'll probably use it the next time. And those of you who maybe know more about this than I do, I'm wondering about using the blinders on the bridle. My horse trainer general feeling is I want my horse to know everything that's going on. I don't want to shock him or surprise him or hide things from him. And I understand the concept of blinders, and so I'm going to start off without them. I may change my mind, and if you want to give me a comment and give me some good reasons to use them, I'm certainly open to hear that. Um, not saying I won't use them, but I'm going to start off maybe without them because I want him to know exactly what's going on. All right, so the next thing that he needs to know besides going forward and turning and stopping is he needs to get used to things that would scare him that are behind him. 
And I'm going to do several things to do this. I'm going to start off with this tarp, which he has seen before. He's not particularly fond of it, but this is probably the fourth or fifth time I've shown it to him. Um, I'm going to start off getting him used to things behind him that make noise and are scary. Then, once I'm satisfied that he can handle noisy things, then I'll go with heavy things that also... I'll uh, probably the first thing I'll pull will be a small fence post, wooden fence post. We'll pull that behind him and maybe put that on top of this tarp. Um, we'll just kind of see how that goes. So he handled that really well. So I'm going to clip this on here and have him drag it. Because obviously the most common problem you would have with a horse pulling a cart is something scares them from behind and they take off running forward so that's what we need to try to make sure doesn't happen okay so i'm going to let him pull this and what i'm looking for he's watching it but he's not panicking i'd like him to kind of slow down and be okay with it oh good boy good boy buster you're smarter than the average pony, aren't you? So he's licking his lips there. Let's let him contemplate that for a minute. That was excellent. He's, he's really doing well. Okay, pretty good. So this time I'll pull it four or five feet float closer. We'll do the same thing. Love that. I love it that he didn't trot off that time. So to me, this is more important, really, than the, the long line training. Because when I put my big hind end on that cart, I don't want him, <laughs> I don't want him taking off, right? Uh, especially when I put little children on there with me. I want him to be pretty reliable. And that's really good. You are so good. What a good boy you are. What a good boy you are. Okay. Thank you. See, everything's good. It's all good. So now we'll switch sides on him. We'll do the same thing from this side. Okay. And he may not respond the same. We'll see. Okay. So that bothered him a little bit more. I'm going to let it get a little farther away from him. Good. He slowed down on his own. And he stopped on his own. Okay. So I'll do this as much as I need to before I put the cart behind him. And this, to me, should be scarier than the cart. I don't know how Buster will feel about it, but it seems to me because it's so noisy that it would, it would be scarier than the cart itself. So hopefully that's the case. Okay, so I'm a little closer here. He's thinking about it, he dropped his head. All right, and he's a pony and yes, he's cute, but he's a horse. Training a pony is no different than training a horse. None whatsoever. Okay, it's exactly the same. And so that's a lot of times ponies get a bad reputation because they don't, people don't train them like a horse. They train them like a puppy or something. And that won't work. Okay, he's a horse, so I'm going to train him just like I would any other horse and have the same expectations. Nice. Okay. So he has figured that out. Now, let's see what he does when I ask him to turn around and put that rope behind his hind legs. So I'm going to send him this way where that rope is pulling behind his hind legs. Because he definitely needs to get used to things that are going to be dragging behind him. 
This way, Buster. This way. Yeah, good boy. Okay, I'm real happy with that. I'm pretty happy with that right there. Ooh, beautiful. <laughs> I'd say Buster made an A today, wouldn't you? I, I think he did quite well. So that's a good start. And that's uh, our first installment. What we'll do in the next one is I'll have him rigged up in his harness and we'll start dragging some heavier things. And I'm going to keep doing this. I'll do this two or three more days, the same thing that you saw. And then by the time we come back again, I think we'll be able to pull some heavy stuff and maybe even hook the cart to him. I'm still re furbishing the cart have some new wheels coming and we haven't finished painting it and so we should have all that together in a couple weeks all right stay tuned